Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful right now. And the one thing, of course, that we'll keep an eye on is is how well the starting pitchers will do if their stamina is going to be okay. But first, you know, we talked to Don Bailey yesterday, and we asked him if this club is ready. This club was ready for uh, that particular day for about five or six days prior to this. Uh, because we kind of you know, kind of wavered a little, and everyone's in shape, everyone's ready to go. You, you played also, so you know that time when you're ready to play. And a lot of our players uh, got a lot of at bats in spring training, so they're just kind of spinning their wheels for the last four or five days. Charlie, this is the happiest that he has looked. And as a former player, I can tell you that that for him, this is the best part of the day right now because the game is just about ready to begin. He can put the interviews, he can put the media behind him, and now he can do what he does best, and that's manage a baseball game. And you can tell by the smile on his face that he is going to enjoy today. That's right, he doesn't have to answer any more that's questions right. for the next three hours, and he can do what he is paid to do, and that's to help this 25-man roster pick up a W. Interesting, though, he felt uh, ball club ready a few was ready a few days ago. Yeah, he said that you know we're ready, no. but we were ready maybe five or six days yeah. ago. And and he watched his club develop throughout the course of spring training, and he felt like it had peaked towards the end of of their stay in Tucson. And you have to play the rest of those games, but I think he would have liked to have started the season right then and there. But I think also part of that development was this past weekend against the Minnesota Twins in a big league ballpark. Well, it's nice to, to go to a facility that that is big league atmosphere. And, of course, there is no more big league atmosphere than to come to New York and play in the Big Apple. So... I think it is part of spring training to prepare yourself for the regular season, and part of the preparation is to go to a big league town and play in a big league ballpark. And most of these guys have played in the major leagues, but a few of them have to experience that too. But also, even the ones that have played in the major leagues, not that many have uh, had that starting mantle and had the pressure to carry it. And now it's mine. It is my position. It is mine to lose. Oh, that's right. Guys like Gerald Clark or Dante Bichette, Andres Galarraga, uh, never before have they been the marquee guys. And all of a sudden now, on this ball club, they're the guys that people are looking at to carry them. And it's important that those three fellas who may not have been the marquee guys on other clubs now handle that load. And Faye Vincent, the former commissioner of baseball, is being introduced here. There he is right in the middle. Just to the right of Don Baylor, to Don Baylor's right. He's going to throw out the first pitch already. That, that looked like a split finger. There's Jerry McMorris, the head man, and his wife Mary. This has to be such a special day for them. We talked to Faye Vincent, you and I, before the game, and, and he, I think, had that look in his eye like, like this was a pretty special moment for him, too. Yeah. When he was commissioner, he just loved to come out to the ballpark, sit in the front row, talk to the fans, and, and watch a baseball game. That was very relaxing. And he would stay after the game and talk with everybody. So as always on opening day, this is the mayor of New York who is being introduced to mixed reviews as the mayor of New York always has. Right. If you get cheered, I think you probably go back to your office and wonder, what have I done wrong? The other thing about opening day is, is normally if they say it's going to start at 2.10, it generally will start about 2.20. Yeah. And you know, that's something that you just kind of have to plan for. For David Need, he has to make sure that, that he's not ready 10 minutes before he should be. So he's down in the bullpen right now. You saw a glimpse of him before. 
He's down there throwing and and Larry Bernard will keep an eye on the festivities and slow him down if it's necessary. But right now, I'm not so sure you can slow down a 24-year-old who is starting the first game in franchise history. But also, interestingly enough, he is returning to the site where he pitched in his first major league game. And that was here in Shea Stadium with 35,000 people looking on at that time. He had been called up from the Atlanta Braves uh, AAA ball club at Richmond. He pitched seven innings. He allowed one run. He struck out four in his major league debut. And by the time October was over, he helped the Braves reach the World Series. He'd accumulated a 1.17 ERA in 23 innings. He struck out 19. Now, that's all well and good. But I think the key number there, 23 innings. So he has a long way to go. Yeah, he does. And I'm sure that is... His first start for the Atlanta Braves didn't nearly have the buildup that this start. Oh, that's true. <laughs> and, you know, this is something that if he tries to, if he's in Arizona, he's trying to maybe put it aside and not think about it, people remind him every day. Oh, yeah. And ask him about. Including us. Including us. Every time we'd go by. Many times. Man. Five days to go, Dave. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> I really needed that. There you see the Rockies catcher Joe Girardi that is the the finger on his catching hand and usually that's the finger that the catchers will keep out of the glove or if they prefer to keep it inside then they will tape it up because that's where the ball a lot of times will hit that finger right through the leather of the catcher's mitt today it's the Colorado Rockies and the New York Mets, we're in Shea Stadium in New York. The temperature is going to reach into the mid, possibly to the upper 50s. As the New York Mets take the field. The 1993 New York Mets with a good spring training. Not a great spring training coming off of two disastrous years. The last 10 days of spring training when the starters began to play seven and eight innings is when they finally started to play the baseball that they expect this ball club to play throughout the year. Well, they're a very talented team, one that that has as good a chance to win the National League as the other team. And I think because of their experience and the potential in their pitching staff, I would say that they have to be the favorites to win it. And now it's time for the Rocky Mountain News starting lineup for the Colorado Rockies. It'll be Eric Young at second base, Alex Cole in center field, Dante Bichette in right field. Under Calaraga at first, Gerald Clark in left, Charlie Hayes at third. Joe Girardi, you saw him a moment ago, will be the catcher. Freddie Benavides is at short. And David Mead is the pitcher. Defensively, for the New York Mets, Vince Coleman, Joe Arcelak, Bobby Bonilla. That's the outfield left to right with Howard Johnson and Tony Fernandez on the left side of the infield. Jeff Kent and Eddie Murray on the right side of the infield. And Todd Hundley will be the catcher. On the mound is the doctor, Dwight Gooden. Yeah, Dwight Gooden coming off a season where he was under 500 for the first time 10 and 13 with a 367 earned run average he is 28 years old believe it or not this is his 10th major league season and he is a two pitch pitcher he has a terrific fastball a sharp breaking curveball if he is getting both of those pitchers pitches over the plate he can be very difficult. And Eric Young will lead it off. And this is what Eric Young's thoughts were about leading off this game. I thought about it a little bit. I guess it hit hitting more once I get on the flight headed towards New York. But, uh, you know, it's a lot to think about. Uh, also think about I'm seeing my family. Also think about Gooden. Also think about New York and Anita. But uh, I guess actually it will hit me when I walk up to the batter's box. It is history, and he does have a lot of thoughts, though, doesn't he? And we're set to go. Good delivery. Strike one. 
And that ball will go into the Hall of Fame. And Gooden says, wait a minute. Where's the ball throw it back to me? I felt pretty good about that. Ball. Yes. I like that ball. Here's the pitch. And he comes a little high. Jeff Torberg was saying before the game about Gooden, many people felt he had a horrible spring training. He said that his velocity was pretty good. And that a couple of his games, they played in games where the wind was blowing out. A lot of fly balls left the ballpark. Consequently, he gave up a lot of earned runs. And the 2-1 pitch. The butt out in front. And Hundley throws it out. And you are seeing an example of Baylor ball. The butt, the steal, the hit and run, we've seen it in the spring and we'll see it in the regular season. And with one down, here's the center fielder, Alex Cole. Cole hit 303 in the spring. And Gooden gets ahead of him on the count, just as he did Eric Young. And here's the pitch. And it's inside. And the 1-1 pitch from Gooden is high and away. Looks like in the early part here that Gooden, if he takes a little bit off his fastball, he can get it over for a strike. This one is lined to right field, and Bobby Bonilla is there. And we have two down. <laughs> and with two away, here's the right fielder for the Colorado Rockies, Dante Bichette. Gooden still has a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. He just doesn't have it as often as he used to have. And he's not going to try to throw at 93 on every pitch like he used to when he was younger. And he misses low and away for ball one. That's what Jim Palmer was so good at when he won all those games with the Orioles. He would throw 87, 88, but when he needed a, a strikeout, he'd throw 92, 93. A swing in a minute. Gooden coming off of a mediocre season in 92. His record was 10 and 13. 3.67 ERA, had rotator cuff problems, had some surgery. And he is back. No question about it. And it's a little low. Two balls, one strike to count, no score. Top of the first, we have two away. And Dante Bichette, who hit 319 in the spring. And yesterday afternoon, in the top of the ninth, had a two-run home run against the Twins. Strike two. Another thing you have to remember about Dante Bichette, this is a new league for him. He has seen the doctor for the first time. He may have faced him in spring training, but during the regular season when it counts, this is the first time. And as you can tell, the fans in with every pitch. Foul back. Gooden, the youngest pitcher to win the Cy Young Award at age 21 in 1985. Two balls, two strikes to count to the chef. And he jams him and he fouls it out of play. And an opening day souvenir. Now, this is the type of day, if you're a fan, not only do you want to wear your gloves to keep your hands warm, but it might be a good idea if you're thinking about catching any pop-ups for souvenirs, you may need the cushion. It's a little brisk out there. And the 2 2 pitch. This one is lined to right. Bonilla going back. Surge makes the play at the warning track. Three up and three down. We're in the middle of the first inning, and we have no score. The Colorado Rockies and the New York Mets. Move to the bottom of the first inning. The Rocky Mountain News starting lineup for the New York Mets. 
Vince Coleman will lead it off in left. Tony Fernandez is the shortstop. Eddie Murray at first. Bobby Bonilla in right field. Ojo, Howard Johnson is back at third. George Salak is in center. Jeff Kent is in second. Todd Hundley is the catcher. And Dwight Gooden is the pitcher. Defensively for the Colorado Rockies, Gerald Clark, Alex Cole, and Dante Bichette in the outfield from left to right with Charlie Hayes and Freddie Benavides on the left side of the infield. Eric Young and Andres Calaraga on the right side and Joe Girardi is the catcher on the mound is David Mead. Charlie, I talked with David Mead yesterday at the Metrodome and this is what he had to say about today. Well, you know, I think once I hit the plane tonight and head on to the new to New York, I think everything will start sinking in a little bit more. I'll uh, relive a little bit of last year when I made my first start there against New York. Uh, probably uh, think about Vince Coleman a little bit because he is the first guy I'll face and uh, probably start getting a little bit of goosebumps by then. But I uh, hope I get a good night's sleep. Uh, I want to go out there and try to not be more than I can do. I want to, if I throw 90, I don't want to go out there and try to throw 95. I want to stay within myself, work the hitters, and uh, hopefully good things will happen. I think it's very important what he said. If you can throw 90, throw 90. Don't try and throw 91. Do what you can do. That's right. And don't try to do more than what you're capable of doing. And what he needs to do is throw strikes, keep the ball low, and have fun. Now, who said that? I, uh, I think that David Mead said that earlier, yes. Is that where we heard it? Here's Vince Coleman, the left fielder, leading off for the Mets. And Mead misses for ball one. Mead will throw a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. And the bear, Larry Bernard, was telling us that his best pitch this spring has been his slider. And the 1-0 pitch. And this will carry foul into the stand. The ball on the strike to Vince Coleman. It would do a lot for David Need to be able to keep Coleman off the bases because he can disrupt you so much that he can give you a miserable first inning. In the last two years, Coleman has been plagued by injuries. He's played in only 143 games over the last two years. He has had what some have said is an attitude problem. He's had some confrontation uh, with his manager. In the offseason, he took a martial arts lesson. That kind of panicked everybody. He said this was the nicest spring that he has had. Notice how he just kept sliding right through that. One ball, two strikes now to Vince Coleman. Now, problems with the manager and then take martial arts in the offseason. Yeah. Not a good formula. No. But it does catch your attention. One ball, two strikes to count to Vince Coleman. We're in the bottom of the first inning. He leads it off for New York. It's interesting what Coleman just did. He started the at-bat wearing gloves. He has since taken them off. Mm -hmm. Warming up. I've never seen that before. And the one-two pitch from me. And he strikes him out. So David Nee opens the ball game with a strikeout. Yeah, Coleman had a little better success with the gloves on. At least he fouled them off. Here's that hard slider we were talking about. Larry Bernard said it was his best pitch. Well, in this at bat, it was his best pitch to Vince Coleman. And that'll bring up Tony Fernandez, the shortstop, an all-star shortstop. There's the bear. Four golden gloves. Goes with the butt. Takes his stand for ball one. Think of all the, the quality things that the Mets did to improve themselves. This is the best one. This guy is going to help them tremendously. And he fouls this one back. A ball and a strike. To Tony Fernandez. He came to the Mets from the Padres as part of a fire sale. They had to get rid of him because they were running out of time. And they didn't really get that much for him. Wally Whiters, DJ Dozier, and a minor leaguer. A ball on a strike. One away, no score, bottom of the first inning. Hey! And it's low, two and one. Well, it's the time has finally arrived for Don Baylor. And now he can manage. Three and one to Fernandez. Already a couple of firsts of the ball game. First pitch, first strikeout. And a 
four count now for Tony Fernandez. There you see Eddie Murray in the on deck circle. And he walks it. And that is the first walk of the ball. Game. Last year, the Mets' most productive hitter. On the media guide last year, the manager, Jeff Torborg, Bobby Bonilla, Eddie Murray, and Saberega go to first. And Fernandez is back. And of that group, Eddie Murray had the best year. Murray steps out. And now we're set to go. And it's all back. Talked about Tony Fernandez and what he can do to make a team so much better. Obviously, we know that he's a special player defensively. But offensively, he's got a little pop where he can hit the ball in the alley. And if he gets on first base, he can also steal a base for you. He runs well. Base set in the right field, and Fernandez heads for third. Here is the throw. And the next battle is runners on the corner. Opening between first and second, Eddie Murray looking for a pitch on the inside part of the plate. He gets it and he drives it right by Andres Galarraga. And here is the slim down version of Bobby Bonilla. He dropped almost 30 pounds in the offseason. And the breaking pitch misses low for ball one. Now, one of the things you must remember about David Mead is he he is a slow starter. He will get himself into all kinds of problems in the first inning and then work his way out and then settle in. Here's the pitch. And it's popped out. Girardi comes back and makes the play. And we have two down. And it doesn't take the fans very long to welcome Bobby Bonilla back to New York. Here's a chance for an RBI, and Bonilla pops it straight back. Girardi gets rid of the mask, and that's so he doesn't throw it in an area where he might step on it. He gets rid of it, and he makes the play. And the next hitter will be the third baseman, Howard Johnson. And he is happy to get out of the outfield and be back at third. Sometimes, Charlie, a player that will move defensively back to a comfortable position will really help him offensively. And Mead is low and inside is Fernandez and taking down the base pass from third. Tony Fernandez, the runner at third, and Eddie Murray is aboard at first. And they count one ball, no strikes with two away to Howard Johnson. No score, first inning. Ball two. Well, now Don Baylor has instructed Andres Galarraga to play behind Eddie Murray just to take a little bit of that hole away from first and second. You figure with the count 2-0, and oh, Hojo get a pretty good pitch, and he'd be able to drive it in that hole if he had an opportunity. Murray is going for first to fake of the throw. And Eddie Murray has a stolen base. 
So now the Mets have two runners in scoring position. Eddie Murray, you see here now at second, Fernandez at third. And when you don't hold the runner on, this is the chance that you take. And Murray, I'm sure, on his own, once Galarraga got off the bag, took advantage of it and stole second. And the count is to play two balls in a strike. Bottom of the first inning, we have two outs. Need delivers and he's outside three and one. It was interesting, after Need delivered that pitch, and it was high and outside. He quick took a look to see who was in the on-deck circle. In other words, thinking that if it's somebody I wouldn't mind pitching to, I don't have to lay one in here to Howard Johnson. And it's Joe Orsillac. And this is fouled off. Orsillac in the on-deck circle is the starting center fielder for Ryan Thompson. They wanted Thompson to start, but over the weekend, he came up with a full hamstring. Three balls, two strikes to count to Howard Johnson. Fernandez at third, Murray at second. And here's the pitch. And he strikes him out. For his second strikeout in the ballgame. Need works his way out of trouble. After one, we are scoreless. Well, he wasn't a baby pitching to Howard Johnson. And this is the pitch to end the inning and get Need out of a jam. And boy, did we get him out in a hurry. Zap, zap. You didn't realize. Get that on the road. Oh, that guy. smoke that he has. Now, let's try it at real speed. No, that's just a, that's a low heat. That was in slow motion. Andres Galarraga to lead off the top of the second inning. Did you have the jug gun on that first replay? <laughs> 322 mile an hour. Boy, this is sneaky fast. He did not go around, and the count to the big cat. Two balls and no strike. Every time it looks like Gooden wants to get a little extra, he can't control the fastball. It's way out of the strike zone. Base hit. First hit. For the Colorado Rockies. Now will they take this ball and throw it out? They certainly should. Oh, should, yes. And Harry Wendelstead, <laughs> veteran umpire, will take it and toss it into the Rockies dugout. Right. And there you see the owner's box, and don't you think they're having a good time? Oh, yeah. Take and a look at this historic base hit. Fastball down and away in a line drive into center field. And so Andres Galarraga is aboard at first with a base hit. And Gerald Clark is the batter. Ooh, and Gooden comes high and tight. The point really Charlie on trying to make with Gooden's fastball, when he throws it for a strike, it's very hittable because the velocity is there. When he really pumps up and tries to throw it hard, you can hit it because it's out of the strike zone. Fly ball, shallow right field. It may drop. And going out from second base is Jeff Kent. Good play. So Kent chased it all the way out. And we have one down. Next down, number three, number 13, Jamie Hayes. Well, as a second baseman, when the ball leaves the bat, you know that you're the only player that's got a shot at catching this ball. Bonilla can't get it. Obviously, Eddie Murray can't. Jeff Kent did, and he made a nice play. And now we have one bit first, and the batter is Charlie Hayes, the third baseman. And Gooden misses with the breaking ball. And that's the first breaking ball that we have seen and again you have to keep in mind if he can throw it over for a strike usually that's when he can be very difficult here's the pitch and it's fouled out of play Rocky fans now is a good time for you to break open an ice cold Budweiser and enjoy the fresh pure natural taste 
nothing beats a buzz. When we talked to Charlie on the plane last night coming in from Minnesota, he said he was uh, interested in the reception that he might get today because when he was with the Phillies when he was in shape, he was in the middle of a major dolly brook with the New York Mets. But he had a pretty good reception. Galarraga back to first. And the count of the plate, a ball and a strike. Well, he had such a good year for the Yankees that the fans did not forget that. The big cat is going the hit and run. Throw to first, Galarraga goes to third, he's safe. And that is Baylor ball. As Hayes is thrown out at first, Galarraga, who was off on the hit and run, never broke stride. And our first beef between manager and umpire, Fernandez with a little flip, and then Eddie Murray's got to go across the diamond. And from up here, it looked like he was safe. Of course, if this were the best view for umpires, this is where they would put them. Of course. And Hojo got kicked. He may have gotten spiked on the slide by Galarraga. But you're right, a good example here in the second inning on what Dale, Don Baylor wants, and that's his players to be aggressive. Eddie Murray with the long throw. And the swipe tag by Hojo. And Galarraga saying, I'm safe. And Angel Hernandez, the third base umpire, agrees with him. Two away, Galarraga is at third. And Joe Girardi, the catcher, is the next batter. And here's the pitch. And he pops it up. Murray comes in and makes the play. No runs on a hit and a man left. We're in the middle of the second. We have no score. The Rockies in the mess. Welcome back to Shea Stadium. We have no score. The Colorado Rockies and the New York Mets will move now to the bottom of the second inning. And for the Mets, Joe Orsalak, Jeff Kent, and the catcher, Todd Hundley. How long does it take the jitters to go away on opening day? Generally, Charlie, it's, it's gone after you're involved in something, whether it be a ground ball, whether you've been to the plate. And for David Need, I think that, that they're gone because he was in trouble in the first inning and he got out of it. So now everything should be a little bit easier for him, although I hope he pitches the rest of the way like he did to Howard Johnson. Orsalak squares as if he wanted to bunt. Charlie Hayes in on the grass at third. And Galarraga coming down from first. Orsalak hitting 328 in the spring. And it's fouled away. 0 oh and 2 the count at the plate. Orsalak with the Orioles last year. He led Baltimore in hitting, hitting 289 last year with. Four home runs and 39 RBIs. And the 0-2 pitch is high. David Need with a pair of strikeouts as he bookended the bottom of the first inning. He opened with a strikeout of Vince Coleman and he closed it with a strikeout of Howard Johnson. And the count goes to two and two. And it's fouled away. You have a theory that we see more foul balls off of left-handed hitters. Seems like we do. And I think a lot of it has to do with right-handed pitchers pitching those left-handed hitters away. They constantly try to keep that ball away as opposed to busting them on the inside part of the play. A lot of foul balls over the third base dugout. This one is lined over the head of Colorado. And Orsalak takes a big turn and then puts on the break. So Orsalak opens the bottom of the second with a hit. 
Now the reputation of Dante Bichette and the strength of his arm has obviously reached the National League. Yes. Yeah. It is hard to run on him. And that will bring up the second baseman Jeff Kent who made that outstanding defensive play of the last half inning. How tough is that play to go out as far as he did. Well what you do is is it's a lot like what we talked about at the Metrodome you really the ball's not hit high enough where you can take your eye off of it to see where that left fielder is so it's a tough play. Or select the runner at first. Jeff Kent came over from Toronto in the David Cohn deal last year. Throw to first. And Orsalak is back. Kent is young, talented, good power. He's 25. He has good speed, but he does strike out a lot. Anytime you're looking at the bottom of the order coming up, rarely will you see a team bunt, but once in a while you'll see teams try to move the runners along by way of the hit and run. Here's the pitch. Ball strike. And the reason for that is, is you're not going to advance the runners in the scoring position. You're not going to give up an out when you're that low to the bottom of the order because obviously your eighth and ninth place hitters aren't that good of hitters and especially the ninth place hitter which is the pitcher. So you want to let those guys swing the bat. Pitch out. And Orsalak was not going. A ball and a strike to Jeff Kemp. We're in the bottom of the second inning. We have no score. Here's the pitch. Well, Joe Girardi's going to go out and he's going to say, okay, listen, kid. We know that those last two balls were not your fault because they were called from the dugout. Now, you have to calm down. We, the team, has put you behind in the count. So that's not your fault. So just settle down, relax. We'll try to get a strike here to Jeff Kent. As you can see, he was almost his body language mm -hmm. almost said yeah. he was a little bit disgusted. Yeah, why am I doing this? And the two-one pitch. And he misses low and away, and the count is three balls and a strike. On deck is the catcher Todd Hundley. Orsalak at first a leadoff single in the bottom of the second. Here's the pitch. And it's a full count. Second time in the ball game that, Nave, that David Need has taken a batter to a full count. The last was Howard Johnson and then he struck him out to end the bottom of the first. Well, now we'll see if Jeff Torbwork has Orsalak moving. Count three and two, generally you'll see managers take advantage of that count and start that runner. Orsalak is going and is fouled into the stand. Come visit your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer where you'll find great deals in the hottest lineup for 93 during the biggest little car blowout. It's going on right now. And with the leadoff single to Orsalak and the full count to Kent, the pace of the game has certainly slowed down. Three two pitch runner is going lined over the shortstop. Orsalak goes to third. 
The throw comes into second. And once again, the New York Mets have runners on the corner. Well, this wasn't all David Needs' fault. He had to come in with the count three and two. So Kent had a good pitch to hit. The reason he had to come in, he threw two pitch outs. And that left him behind in the count. Orshelax, the runner, is third. Jeff Kent is aboard at first. There are no outs. We're in the bottom of the second inning, and the catcher, Todd Hunley, is the hitter. Excellent defensive catcher. He's a weak hitter, 188 in the spring. This is a good spot, though, Charlie. If you're David Need, you got the bottom of the order. Work hard on these next two guys, and you could get out of the jam. Here's the pitch. And he'll pull it foul. He catches this one. Hunley hit only 209 last year, but he hit 232 in the second half of the season. And he had a total of seven home runs. Yeah, he's got a little pop. In other words, if you set aside his, his weak batting average and you look for that silver lining, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Here's the pitch. High fly ball. Bichette comes in. And here is the throw. They'll cut it off. Again, the respect for the arm of Dante Bichette. And with one away, here is the pitcher, Doc Gooden. Now Dante gets himself in position. One hands it. And if there had been one out instead of no outs, you may have seen Mike Cubbage, the third base coach, send the third base runner, Joe Orsolak. And Gooden is an excellent hitter. Now you see the graphic. 264 led all National League pitchers last year. In fact, one of the few National League pitchers to be used as a pinch hitter. One down, the Mets still have runners at the corners. We have no score. We're in the bottom of the second inning, and for the second time in the ballgame, David Need trying to pitch his way out of trouble. And Charlie, he would be a very good switch hitter, but they do not want him hitting left-handed because it exposes his throwing arm when he bats left-handed. And the Mets starting lineup is loaded with switch hitters. Here's the pitch. Hey, to home. And he is out. So Girardi holds on to the baseball. And Orsilak is out at the plate. Now Gooden just hits a little dribbler. The thing that Charlie Hayes has to do is make sure that he gets Girardi the ball in time so that he can block the plate. And he blocks it off. There's no way that Orsilak can get in there. He kicked him a little bit, but by that time, he was out. So now with two away, the Mets have Kent at second. And Gooden is aboard at first on the fielder's choice. And the hitter is Vince Coleman, who is 0 for 1. He struck out. Lead off the bottom of the first. One ball, no strikes to count to Vince Coleman. They just called a, a ball. ball. Not a balk, a ball on David Need because he went to his mouth. And that's second base umpire, Ed Rapuano, who said Need went to his mouth. Remember we talked in spring training that Need did that once in a yep. while? Yep. All right, now, this is what he's doing. And by that time, the umpire had told him that he had gone to his mouth. Here's the pitch, and it's low. Gooden, the base runner at first, thought that he had called a balk, and he started to go to yeah. second. 
So the count at the plate is now three balls and no strikes to Vince Coleman. Here's the pitch. And it's strike one. Three and one. Ken at second. Gooden at first. Here's the pitch. Strike two. The thing that always bothered me about the fact that if you go to your mouth, they call a ball. Now you can put Vaseline in your glove, razor blades, everything else. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah. if you go to your mouth, uh -huh. it's a gotcha. Three-two pitch. Both runners going. May be playable by Hayes. And David Need gets out of the second inning. After two, no score. Rocky and the Mets. Bottom of the ninth, tie score. Two out, full count. Here's the pitch. It's a fastball. And Ventura connects. A hot liner up the middle. It's still rising. Johnson leaps, and it's off the wall. He's rounding second. The ball drops. McRae scoops it up and wings it toward Pendleton. Here's the play at the plate, and he's safe. It's unbelievable. And that's the game. Now here's the wrap-up. Player, a game in every pack. Today's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Colorado Rockies and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. We go now to the top of the third inning and Freddie Benavides, David Need, and then Eric Young, the top of the order for the Rockies. And the shortstop, Freddie Benavides, to lead it off. Freddie at 339 in the spring. And here's the pitch. And Howard Johnson throws him out, and we have one away. To give you a comparison, in the first two innings, Dwight Gooden, a total of 23 pitches. David Need, 43 pitches. Well, it'll be important for David Need to mix in a couple of innings right here where he only has a, a 7 to 15 pitch inning. And here is David Need. One ball, no strikes, you count one away. We have no score. And he fouls it off. ball down the line and it's going to carry about six rows up into the stand Rockies fans dominoes and the Colorado Rockies have teamed up to offer you a Rockies pizza special for only $9.99 and every time you order a large one item pizza Domino's donates a portion of each sale to the Rockies Youth Foundation call Domino's now and be sure to ask for your Rockies special it's only $9.99 and the one-two pitch to need, and it's high. A one offer to the second baseman, Jeff Kent. He goes to Eddie Murray, and we have two away. So Gooden working very efficiently, and he will now face Eric Young. He was thrown out by the catcher on the bunt attempt. And that was in the top of the first inning on a 2-1 pitch. And Eric Young has that megawatt smile from ear to ear. Well, he's playing in front of a lot of hometown fans. Eric Young trying to figure out how the smallest guy on the team can have the best breaking ball thrown to him by Dwight Gooden. That's right. A ball and a strike now to Eric Young. 
The Rockies sixth overall selection in the expansion draft. He came from the Dodgers. Last year started the year at Albuquerque. Triple A hit 337. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Base hit up the middle. And that is the second hit for the Rockies. Center fielder Alex Cole. And that'll bring up the center fielder Alex Cole. Now during the spring Eric Young stole eight bases. That's the good news. He was caught stealing six times and that's the bad news. And just a tag to that three of those times were yesterday. Yeah. Ron Hassey. Ron Hassey. What did, what did you what did he what did Hassey he coaches at first. What did he tell him. He pulled him over. He said you're making me look bad. Said, get over here you're making me look bad <laughs> yeah. I've only got a one year contract <laughs> but if we're talking about the Rockies and the way they like to run two outs here's Dwight Gooden who has a high leg kick this is a good opportunity for Eric Young and Alex Cole the batter the only left hander in the lineup and he has that hole between first and second. There's the pitch out. So Jeff Torbord's thinking like we are that mm -hmm. Eric Young is going to take off. Oh yeah. And he does take off. Here's the throw to second. And Eric Young has the stolen bases. Huntley was way off the mark. Huntley actually had a pretty a pretty good pitch to throw and there's Eric Young little late jump and then of course with his speed the acceleration and with the bad throw he makes it easily Two away Young's in scoring position to count two and oh to Alex Cole and it's high three and oh. You may wonder where Dwight Gooden gets the nickname Doc, the Doctor of K's, the strikeout. Here's the 3 0 pitch. And it's low, and he walks him on four straight pitches. And that is the first walk that Dwight Gooden has given up in the ballgame. And that will bring up. Dante Bichette. And Alex Cole really does his job there. His responsibility is, yeah, I want to get a base hit to drive in the lead run, but at this point also, I'd like to see Dante Bouchette get up to the plate because he's more of an RBI guy mm -hmm. than I am. In fact, Bouchette had 14 RBIs in the spring. Second high to Benavides, who had 16. So Young is at second, Cole is at first. And he fouls this one away. And you might even see a double steal in order. Because when you follow Baylor ball, don't be surprised. And stay loose. And of course, Todd Hunley aware that the Rockies do a lot of running. He'll have to be ready as well. Oh, and he really threw the shot. What does it feel like? Well, you start thinking that that I've seen his fastball. Now I've seen that good curveball in the 0-2 pitch can be the most difficult pitch to try to hit because you don't know what to expect. Now, Dante yesterday spread out a little bit and, and just tried to make contact with two strikes. No play at second. No balls. Two strikes to count to Bichette. Two away. And he did it so well, he hit it about 375 to win the game. Yeah. Oh, oh. And he hit it. And the Rockies will now have the bases loaded. Now Gooden trying to come inside 0 2 not wanting to hit Bouchette. But watch how Dante opens up 
and then he has to try to get out of the way and he can't do it once you open up there is absolutely no way that you can get out of the way especially when that tailing fastball is bearing in on you and you hope that it just hits fleshy parts and not top of the wrist or your fingers because there are too many bones in there that can go and Don Baylor of course has the record in the major leagues hit by 267 pitches. You know the difference between Don Baylor and Dante Bichette. Baylor never turned into the ball. He always turned away from it. In other words, that pitch would have hit Baylor on the shoulder as opposed to Bichette where he opens up and it hits him on the arm. And here is the first baseman, Andre Scalaraga, who had a single in the top of the second. So now with two away, the Rockies are the bases loaded. And it's fouled out of play. Eric Young is the runner at third. Alex Cole at second. And Dante Bichette hit by the pitch is aboard at first. And he misses high one and one. Galarraga last year at St. Louis hit 296 after the All-Star break. And he was hot in the spring. He hit 357 this year. Here's the offering. And it's inside. Eric Young, the runner, is third. Alex Cole is aboard at second. And Dante Bichette is at first. So Gooden now trying to work his way out of trouble. Strike two. That's a good challenge right there. Oh, yeah. Dwight Gooden. In other words, I'm behind in the count. Here's my fastball. Let's see if you can hit it. And Galarraga knew that a fastball was coming. And he was a little tardy. Two away. Base is loaded. And a 2-2 two -two count to Galarraga. Four count. Count two away. Gooden steps off the rubber. Well, if you're Eric Young at third base, you're going to be going on the pitch, but you start running towards the Rockies dugout. You don't want to run straight down the line. Runners going is fouled out. You take kind of the circle route to home plate, doesn't it? Right. You don't want to get in Whew. line of no. a line drive. Well, you know you can catch a line drive in foul territory also. When you take that angle though, it takes you a little longer to close the gap between hitter and runner. Oh yeah. Runner's going and he strikes him out. First strikeout in the ball game for Dwight Gooden. In the top of the third, the Rockies lead three aboard. We're in the middle of the third. No score. This is also opening day for the Florida Marlins. They are hosting the Los Angeles Dodgers, and they have the early lead. Three nothing. And for the Dodgers is Oral Hershiser against Charlie Huff for the Marlins. Bottom of the third inning, and Tony Fernandez, the shortstop, to lead it off for the New York Mets. In the bottom of the first, after a full count, Fernandez was on on the walk. Ended up at third. He was left stranded. The Rockies and the Mets have both had their chances, but they are yet to score. And David Need comes high for ball one. 
Now both pitchers. You know walking the high wire. And David need more so than. Dwight Gooden is he has gotten out of a couple of jams. And it's foul back. Fernandez has appeared in four All-Star games, three in the American League and one in the National League. As a kid in the Dominican Republic, he was so poor that his brother made him a cardboard glove that he played with. And the pitch is high. And Tony says this is one of the reasons they have such soft hands. That's amazing how those players play in poverty and in the long run it probably helps their ability. This one is foul back should carry out a play. One of the reasons you see a lot of Latin ball players at the shortstop position field balls one handed you see them charging the ball is because the playing conditions where they come from are so poor that in order to get a good hop that's the way that they have to play they have to be one handed infielders. And he's a good one. He may be the best one handed infielder that I've ever seen. And if you're from the Dominican Republic, it seems as if you're a shortstop. That's right. Here's the 2 2 pitch. And it's foul back. I think he's really underrated. Had he been a part of. The World Championship Toronto Blue Jays last year, he probably would have finally gotten his due as what mm -hmm. a terrific player he is. And he may get it now that he's in New York. And the 2 2 pitch. It's foul. Fernandez last year with San Diego at 275, four home runs, 37 RBIs. He stole 20 bases. And it's a gorgeous day. You couldn't ask for a better one to open the season, could you? You know something else? Have you noticed? Have you noticed something? Very few planes are coming over. Oh, they, have the winds changed? It's that, it's that. Or is this the lull at uh, 317 in the afternoon? And then the planes start coming in at 5. But it's all the, part of the Rocky whew, script, sir. Is that what it is? Yes. Right, we uh, we're doing a little bit of repair work. Yeah, part of Shea Stadium fell apart. Yes, that's right. Here's a late arrival to the ball game. That's your plan for tonight. For tonight. For tonight. <laughs> I think I'll wait till tomorrow. I'm not in that big a hurry. Here's the two-two pitch to the plate. Fly ball deep left field. Clark goes back and makes the play. And we have one away, and that'll bring up Eddie Murray. Murray with a single to right, and he stole a base. That was in the bottom of the first inning. Murray, like so many of the Mets, is a switch hitter. Benilla is a switch hitter. Coleman's a switch hitter. Fernandez is a switch hitter. The catcher Hunley is a switch hitter. Ojo Howard Johnson is a switch hitter. Eddie Murray is a switch hitter. He did not go around. Two and zero. Oh, they count to Murray. And Need misses outside three and zero. Oh. Yeah, you have to be careful if you're David Need and you're three and zero oh to Eddie Murray. He loves to swing three zero. Oh. The second walk that David Need has given up in the ball game. Need now has walked two and he has struck out two. And he has given up three hits. And that'll bring up the right fielder Bobby Bonilla.
Bonilla popped up to the catcher in the bottom of the first inning. And he takes the cut and misses. Continental Airlines, official airline of the Colorado Rockies, proving one airline can make a difference in Colorado. You have the feeling that Need is not working as quickly as he worked in the spring. Well, I think you have that feeling about the entire game. Yes, almost if everything has slowed down. Well, I think it's the seriousness. You know, all of a sudden... It counts. Yeah. It counts. It's a W or an L, and a win or a loss. So you slow everything down to try to figure out exactly how you want to approach each situation. Now, that's not to say that spring training isn't taken seriously, but remember, those are exhibition games. Mm -hmm. Eddie Murray, the runner at first, had one stolen base in the spring. One one pitch. High fly ball center field. Alex Cole moves over and makes the play. So with two away, that'll bring up Howard Johnson, the third baseman, who struck out to end the bottom of the first inning. Pocho's home run output dropped drastically last year. He had 38 home runs in 91, had only seven last year. Trying to recapture the magic of 91. He had 259, 38 home runs, 117 RBIs. Ball one. Eddie Murray, the runner at first. He was on in a walk. We have no score. Two away. We're in the bottom of the third inning. The season opener in Shea Stadium. The Rockies in the mess. And it's outside. Now the point should be made that if David Need continues to fall behind to guys like Bonilla, Murray, and Howard Johnson, eventually he's going to pay for it. Yeah. He's been working that high wire act now almost through three innings and he's getting by and it's foul back two balls and a strike to Howard Johnson Ojo last year with a hairline fracture the right wrist had surgery on the wrist also surgery on his shoulder and surgery on both knees so he has been completely rebuilt for this season. And the 2 1 pitch is low. I think it's something we're going to see more players do. At the end of the season, go in, get rebuilt, take care of everything, sure. and maybe add a couple of years to your playing career. And as long as you're in there, if you find anything else wrong, check up oil change, clean out the knee. And he walked him. Second walk in the inning that Need has given up the third of the ball game. And now the Mets with two away have runners at second and first. There's the opening day program here at Chase Stadium. And the yearbook. Valuable souvenirs today. I understand that an entrepreneur in Denver ordered 30,000 programs for today. Did he just kind of hold them and wait? And See what happens. Oh, yeah. Here's the center fielder, Joe Orsola. Strike one. Orsola had a single in the bottom of the second. And then from third, he was thrown out at the plate. Charlie Hayes and Joe Girardi. That was when Gooden hit the slow roller down the third baseline. And the count evens at a ball and a strike 
to Orzola. The thing I will say for David Eade, when he has had to make a good pitch to get out of the inning, he has done it. But up until those points, I think it's been very frustrating for him. Well, it is time. Breaking pitches inside. They need when he releases the ball, he walks off the mound and then he blows in his hands. It's okay. You have the permission of the umpires to blow in those hands. You can just you cannot go to the mouth with your finger. Need already. Now with two away bottom of the third has thrown 65 pitches. Johnson on in the walk is now at second, and Joe Orsilak just walks to first. Yeah, a little pump me up speech coming from Don Baylor. He said, "Are you all right?" And David Need, if I can read lips as well as I think I can, he said, "I'm fine." Jeff Torbork, my former manager with the Cleveland Indians, looking on in the Mets dugout. And the hitter is the second baseman, Jeff Kent. One for one on the season with a single in the bottom of the second. He was left stranded at second. Two away, bases loaded. The four is at second, and he gets out of the inning. To Shea Stadium in New York after three. We have no score between the Rockies and the Mets. We move to the top of the fourth, and with the play-by-play, -play, here's Dwayne Kuyper. Thanks, Charlie. A good look at David Need as he's still wandering around in the dugout, trying to gather himself. Sometimes it's just not comfortable to sit down after you've been in trouble as many innings as as neat has been as Gerald Clark is the first hitter and he swings and misses Clark popped out to Jeff Kent the second baseman down the right field line Kent making a nice play so Clark is 0 for 1. Gerald Clark with a home run at the Metrodome over the weekend where the Rockies split with the Minnesota Twins and this has popped up in the direction of Jeff Kent again. This is a little easier play, and that's one out. So Gooden, who's allowed a couple of base hits, retires the first hitter here in the fourth, and that'll bring up Charlie Hayes. Charlie, last year, with the Yankees, 18 home runs. And also jumping on the first pitch and popping it out of play, and quickly it's 0 and 1. The Yankees were a little disappointed, obviously, that Charlie Hayes was drafted by the Colorado Rockies. I think everybody was surprised he didn't protect him. Charlie was the second player picked in the first round by Colorado. Ah, uh, now the planes are back from LaGuardia. High and deep in the left center field. Orsalak chasing after it, and he makes a basket catch. So Hayes gave it a good ride, and Orsalak, chugging after it, finally ran it down. But Hayes 
hit it well and gave it a pretty good ride. And watch Orsula. He gets to it and very casually with the basket catch. Pick up your Coca-Cola inaugural Rockies 8-ounce collector's bottle at your favorite retailer today and commemorate the Rockies' first season with Coca-Cola. Joe Girardi fouls the first pitch back and it's no balls in one strike. Charlie Hayes swinging at that high fastball and giving it a pretty good ride. Breaking ball out in front of the play. Hanley will jump on it, throw quickly to Murray, and it's a one-two for inning for Dwight Gooden, his second. He did it in the first. We played three and a half here at Shea Stadium. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. Rockies and Mets here on opening day in New York City. And we want to say a big hello to all of you at the Rockies Fest in Kurgan Hall, watching live this afternoon. And by the way, a belated hello to those of you watching on tape when it's replayed tonight. We cover all bases. We don't want to miss a thing. Uh, indeed. And of course, the Rockies Fest uh, tomorrow from 10 to 6, and then on the 7th of April from 10 to 8 o'clock. See Jerry McMorris and his wife Mary to his left. To McMorris's right is Charlie Monfort and his wife Victoria. They are enjoying the ball game. Having their own Rocky set. Pretty good seats. Yeah. Rocky's mania hitting the city of New York. There was an article in one of the newspapers about it today of all the people from Colorado that are in town with the Colorado Rockies paraphernalia. And they were all over the lobby this morning. I can oh, tell yeah. you that. Todd Hundley will lead it off for the Mets and the breaking ball is in there for a strike so you know David Need likes that he gets ahead of Hundley and he does it with the curveball if you look at the line score and you just joined us you'd think well two hits for the Rockies three hits for the Mets this game has probably been moving along quite rapidly not so not so Breaking ball and Hunley waves at it. The reason for that is that the New York Mets through three full innings have stranded seven and the Rockies have stranded four. David Need has gotten out of trouble every inning. And Hunley stays alive. the problem to the catcher plane now starting to go over the top. And that is everybody is in their mind's eye. You know, that is, that's not there. It's really dangerous. It's so close to the dugout, plus you have the rough corner. The catcher or infielder could come charging over there, and it's really dangerous on pop-up. A bad pitch, and Hundley goes after it. And for David Need, that's his third strikeout. Here it is, and it, oh, it is in the dirt. And he did go after, and as you say, two strikeouts in the bottom of the first, and a leadoff strikeout here in the bottom of the fourth. And here's Doc Gooden, who had a chance to help himself by driving home a run in the second inning. And he hit a dribbler to Charlie Hayes. Charlie Hayes threw home, and Orsalak was tagged out by Joe Girardi. Nothing, nothing. Here at Shea Stadium. And it's two balls and no strike. So as good as Neaton was getting in front of Todd Hundley, he's been as bad falling behind 2-0 to Dwight Gooden. And Gooden, off the end of the bat, finds a hole in right field. And Dwight Gooden with a one-out single. And for the Mets, that's their fourth base hit. The stroke of a pitcher, Charlie, not too bad. We mentioned earlier, he is an excellent hitter and has career five home runs and is, has been used, not that often, but has been used as a pinch hitter. And you can certainly see why. An outstanding athlete. Covering at the top of the batting order, Vince Coleman, who has struck out and popped out. 
Colorado playing behind Dwight Gooden and Coleman tries to bunt his way on and fouls it back. Charlie Hayes way down the line at third trying to take that bunt away from Coleman. And Charlie looking into Coleman almost just to say try it again I dare you. And Coleman an excellent bunter. He is he's worked on it he came into the league with the Cardinals and something that he rarely did. But what an advantage to add it to your repertoire if you have the speed like Coleman. Tony Fernandez is on deck. One out. Dwight Gooden, the base runner at first. Coleman again lays it down, and this time he pops it into the screen behind home plate. And quickly it snowballs in two strikes. of anything he's certainly not going to put on the take sign and you're not going to ask him to hit and run line drive in the center field let's see if Gooden tries to go to third he challenges Cole he'll go to third and the Mets are in business here in the fourth inning a solid single for Vince Coleman and what's new? David Need is again struggling. Just a line drive, Charlie. Oh, he put it right in the wheelhouse, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Especially when he was ahead in the count to Vince Coleman. So David Need will try to get out of it again. He's done such a terrific job doing that through innings one, two, and three. He'll have to do it again here in the fourth. Fernandez has walked and flied out. And this has popped out of play as Coleman blocked running at first base. I think I spoke too soon about the plane from LaGuardia. That's yeah, getting on to 4 o'clock, yes. Yeah. My three innings. Right, and the traffic is coming in. And now Need will bluff to third and then check on first. No balls and a strike to Tony Fernandez. Last year with the Padres, Fernandez with 37 RBIs, a 275 batting average. Need needs a ground ball right here to either Benavides or Young. And that misses and it's one ball and one strike. Tony Fernandez. A star with the Blue Jays. Played well for San Diego. Now he is in the Big Apple. Looking into Girardi, and he's got the sign. Coleman bluffs a pitch out, nothing doing, and it's two and one. And again, Need with that same body language just off of the pitch out. And he's behind in the count. And the body no, body language may be that he's disappointed that Coleman didn't go, but it could also mean that once again he's behind. Again, a bluff and nothing going on. A lot of times, Charlie Pitchers will do that, not because they think they're going to get the base runner. They just aren't ready to throw the ball home. So rather than step off, they'll do that move to third and then to first. Coleman goes. Fernandez grounds it. A run will score. Young cuts it off. And Fernandez is out. But the Mets take a one to nothing lead. <laughs> and on the play, Coleman goes into second. But Eric Young didn't have any play other than this one. 
Make sure you get that one out. And it was the hit and run that saved the double play. So that's exactly what Need wanted. Eddie Murray pushes it well. Bouchette got room and he puts it away. So Need allows a run here in the fourth inning on a couple of base hits. We have played four at Shea Stadium. It's the Mets one, the Rockies nothing. Top of the fifth inning. Mets on the board. They lead one to nothing. This was the final out of the fourth inning, and Eddie Murray hit this ball a little towards the end of the bat. Eddie got it on the sweet part, and it would be a three to nothing score. But Dante Bichette with the glasses there, and he puts it away. So for the Rockies, here in the top of the fifth, Benavides, Need, and Eric Young. Benavides grounded out to third, in the third. And he goes after the first pitch and pops it out of play. And Rockies fans, Domino's and the Colorado Rockies have teamed up to offer you a Rockies pizza special for only $9.99. So call Domino's now and be sure to ask for your Rockies special. It's only $9.99. 0-1 pitch to Benavides is up high. One ball and one strike. A lot of things going on in this new 1993 baseball season. Swing and a miss. One and two. Two new teams. Well aware of that. But also this is the farewell season. For Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan. Yes. So it's hello to two new teams and goodbye to a legend. 27 seasons in the major league. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievable. 2-2 two -two pitch to Benavides. Folks at the right field. Bonilla makes the catch. So Bobby Bonilla takes a double, maybe triple, away from Freddie Benavides. And for a moment, it didn't look as if Bobby Bonilla was going to get there. And you almost wonder if the loss pounded. He took off some 30 pounds from last year. Maybe he picked up the extra step. You're right. And then that long glove, and yeah. it finds the pocket. David Knee takes the first pitch for a strike. Knee grounded out to second in the third inning. Bonilla looking... Slim and trim. He looks good. On the breaking ball, it's 0-2 to need. It was well documented last year about Benilla wearing earplugs. When he said, drowned out the noise of what is overhead right now, an airplane. Many people felt he did it, so he couldn't hear the booing. Breaking ball, and it's strike three called. Second strikeout for good. With two down, that'll bring up Eric Young. Young tried to bunt his way on. He tried to get in the history books by way of the bunt, but he was thrown out 2-3. And then he singled in the third inning. And the 1-0 pitch to the Rocky second baseman is in there for a strike. Don't miss the big Dodge Caravan sale event. See your Dodge dealer today. Young takes it. And Harry Wendelstead said just a little bit high. And it's two balls and one strike. Doesn't seem like Monday, does it? Does not. Does seem like opening day. Pageantry. Of course, all the special things that have happened to this franchise. Anthony Young, who is trying to find a friend out in the bullpen. Eric Young skies it to left field. That's Vince Coleman who one hands it, and that'll do it. The second three up, three in, inning in a row for Dwight Gooden. We played four and a half. It's one to nothing, Mets. Nothing with the Mets on top. Bottom of the fifth inning, David Need has not been sharp, but he has managed to get out of 
three jams and then allowed a run in the fourth inning. And he'll be facing Bonilla Johnson in Orsalak. Need with three strikeouts. And wouldn't you know that the run that has been scored in this game has been scored by the opposition's pitcher, Dwight Gooden. And Bonilla grounds this one into the dugout. May have bounced it off of his foot, and then, of course, he whacks himself on the helmet. Just these days, that's why ballplayers wear helmets. 0-1 pitch. A little in tight. One ball and one strike. This is a sellout here at Chase Stadium. Bonilla goes the other way, and that'll be foul. It's also... A day where Bay Vincent threw out the first ball. mentioned earlier what a joy it is for him to be at the ballpark. He really, really yeah. enjoys it. One two pitch. Breaking ball and Bonilla had a good cut and he fouls it back. This is the 32nd opener for the New York Mets. 30 of them here at Shea Stadium, which means they opened a couple of times at home in another ballpark. And that was at the Polo Ground while they were building Shea Stadium. Bonilla hits it well. Is it far enough? It is gone. A home run. And there is no question. That's a home run stroke every time. And he hit in the right spot where he could watch it. And question was, is was it going to stay fair? And it did. And here's Howard Johnson. Ojo is 0 for 1 with a walk. Here you see Bichette. No doubt it was fair, but it was just fair. Two balls and no strikes. Might be a good time for someone to settle down David Need. The 2-0 pitch to Hojo is down low. Three balls and no strikes. This is when an infielder or a catcher will say something encouraging keep the manager from having to go out there and all you tell need at this point is hey listen it's only two to nothing we're still in this game and that's a strike there is Butch Henry in the bullpen and of course the bullpen for the Mets is quiet in the starting rotation for the Rockies, Butch Henry is scheduled to start in Mile High Stadium next Sunday. Is that the bear on the phone? Bear is on the phone to the to the bullpen. So with nobody out and a man aboard here in the fifth inning. The hitter will be Joe Orsolak. We have seen a number of Rockies banners around Shea Stadium. You just saw one. Orsolak singled in the first inning and then walked in the third. 
Marcelak with a good spring. He hit a couple of home runs. And nine RBIs. Now Howard Johnson calls timeout. again and Howard Johnson is back. Marcelak last year with the Orioles. Johnson does not go and that pitch is outside and it's a ball and no strike. Last year four home runs, 39 RBIs for Orsalak. deck is Jeff Kim. Marlins now lead the Dodgers four to nothing. Johnson goes grounded to Galarraga. He'll check second and then take the easy out at first. Bank One Colorado is proud to be the official bank of the Colorado Rockies. Bank One, whatever it takes, member FDIC. So here's Jeff Kent, who's single in the second and grounded out in the third. Johnson aboard at second base with one out. We talked before the game with Don Zimmer. We had a great conversation about what it was like with him and the New York Mets because he was a part of their expansion team third base so the smartest thing they did was hire Casey Stingle and they had media all over oh, the yeah. place yeah. and somebody asked Jim how you know how did he do it he said well I went one for four one for four one for four oh for 32 one for four one for oh for 32 and I was traded to Cincinnati <laughs> Johnson with a good lead at second, and the breaking ball is a strike to Kim. It's amazing how ball players have those those crystal clear memories. Yes. And Don Zimmer, you're right, said the best part of that experience was Casey. He said he had an entourage that followed him all over the ballpark. I remember opening day, Lindsey Nelson told me. A day much like today. Johnson goes and Ken follows it. And Lindsay, like you and me this morning, didn't sleep a lot. He was up early. He got to the ballpark about 9.30 in the morning, and he looked around. And Casey wasn't there. Casey comes in about noon o'clock, about, about noon, and he looked over to Lindsay and said, Lindsay, son, don't ever get to the ballpark before the players. <laughs> oh, the yeah. kids. They have... Quotations from Casey that go on and on, on, and, on. And, and they are tremendous. Someday we'll we'll rattle off some of those too. Now Jeff Kent calls timeout. I once had dinner with him in Cincinnati. I've never laughed so hard in my life, and I did not understand one word he said. Not one word. The whole part of of Casey was is he he just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And after he was through talking to him, Johnson goes again and Kent fouls it again. After you got through talking to him, you just kind of shook your head. Yeah. And everybody kind of walked away, and you kind of looked at each other. <laughs> Part of that experience with Casey, talking about with Don Zimmer and the Mets, was on April 11th, 1962 at Sportsman's Park where the Cardinals beat the Mets 11 to 4 and that's the game that got this franchise going, the New York Mets. Kent flies it to right field. Bouchette got it. And quickly back to second base is Howard Johnson. Yes, Kent 
Casey is the one in the middle, number 37. On the left would be Gil Hodges. On the right would be Tom Seaver. Casey. Todd Hundley is flied out and struck out. And they're going to walk Hundley intentionally to pitch to Dwight Gooden, which many people. I'm not sure I would agree with that. You've got a 200 hitter. Gooden with a single one for two in the ball game, and he scored a run and has. He's a better hitter than Hundley. But it does give you the point. the first home run. Roger Craig started for the Mets and he took the loss. Richie Ashburn was the first hitter and he flied out to Kurt Flood. So many of the the first that we are seeing for the Rockies of course the same holds true for the Mets in 1962. Gooden grounds this one foul. Gooden reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning and singled and scored the Mets first run in the fourth. Top of the batting order Vince Coleman is on deck. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning and Gooden fouls it again. We saw in our experience in spring training a lot of quick games, a lot of two hour and 20 minute ball games. And this one is not like that at all. Gooden hits it well, but Benavides stays down, stays with it, and flips it to Eric Young. But New York Mets do come up with a run, a solo home run by Bobby Bonilla. They add to their lead, it's now two to nothing. Back at Shea Stadium. On our Kings Super Scoreboard, the Yankees are leading the Indians by a score of 7-1. to Jimmy Key started that game for the Yankees. For the Indians, Charles Nagy. 7-1, to Yankees are leading. Here at Shea Stadium, it's 2 to nothing. Mets leading, and Alex Cole will be the first hitter. And he bunts this one back up against the screen. And it is no balls and one strike. Alex Cole lined out to right field and then walked in the third inning. Rockies need some base runners. That pitch misses and it's one ball and one strike. Haven't been able to mess with Gooden's rhythm at all. Not since the third inning when they left the bases loaded. This is grounded. Fernandez one hands it and flips it. How easy it looked. Hot dogs and cold beer are all part of the baseball experience. When beer is a part of your, day, uh, your game day menu, Coors Brewing Company encourages you to enjoy our products responsibly. And please use a designated driver. Dante Bichette flied out deep to right field and was hit by a pitch in the third inning. So he is 0 for 1. And Gooden has retired eight in a row. He's in a groove. And Alex Cole is the type of guy that can mess with that groove, try to bunt, take a few pitches. But he grounded out, so here's Bouchette, and he tries to bunt for a hit, and he bunts it foul, and quickly it's 0 and 2. You take a look at Dwight Gooden and his record last year where he was three games under 500 and then you take a look at his lifetime record 142 and 66 mm. got him the knew it 
two down third strikeout for the doctor. And with the strikeout good now has retired nine in a row right on the outside corner. And the big cat Galarraga who now owns the first base hit in Rockies history will step up to the plate. And then if you want to carry it a little further he also earns the first strikeout. That's right. And that curveball misses one and oh. Galarraga 357 this spring with three home runs and 14 RBI. And if you remember he started out I believe 0 for 14. 0 for 14 yes. Yeah. Everything quiet in both bullpens. The 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball is left high. And you can see Gooden really trying to do a little too much on that pitch, and he just left it high in the strike zone. Payoff pitch to Galarraga, and he fouls it back. Galarraga with the bases loaded and two outs in the third inning, as we mentioned earlier, struck out. Young after two were out in the third singled and then Cole and Bouchette reached Cole by way of the walk Bouchette was hit by a pitch. Here it's three two to Galarraga and he grounds it. Hojo knocks it down recovers the throw in time. Eddie Murray dug it out. Galarraga went sprawling and that retires the side. Bottom of the sixth inning, Mets two, Rockies nothing. Here's the play that ended the top of the sixth. Howard Johnson knocked it down, then the throw. Murray with the scoop, and Galarraga tripped over Eddie Murray's leg. Murray was in the dugout receiving some treatment from their trainer, so it may have been that he was kicked as Galarraga went by. The new pitcher for the Rockies is Butch Henry. Henry comes into the game replacing David Need. And he'll be facing Vince Coleman. And he hits this one off the end of the bat foul. Butch Henry this spring was 2 0 with an 0 9 8 earned run average in five or in four games. Spring, Butch Henry. So all of the switch hitters in the Mets lineup now will turn around and bat right-handed, and there's a base hit for Vince Coleman, his second of the game. He is now two for four. So Coleman doesn't waste any time as he greets Henry with a base hit. So Eddie Murray limping in the Mets dugout is going into the on deck circle. David Need goes five innings, two runs, two earned runs, six hits, six walks, three strikeouts. Henry goes to first to keep an eye on Coleman. You mentioned earlier how Vince Coleman can disrupt the team playing defense and Butch Henry has to keep an eye on him. Again to first base. So the one thing that hurt David Need was his control with the six one.
check swing Fernandez grounds it to Eric Young his only play will be at first one out on the play Coleman goes down to second Continental Airlines official airline of the Colorado Rockies as you take a look at the check swing proving one airline can make a difference in Colorado. Murray will bat right-handed for the first time this year. He singled in the first inning, walked in the third, and flied out to right field in the fourth. Swing and a miss. A good changeup for Butch Henry. And as the shadows start to move across Shea Stadium, it's beginning to get a little cool. Yes, it is, and that's Willie Blair down in the Rockies bullpen, which is located over the left field fence. Owen won the count to Eddie Murray. And that's outside. Eddie Murray. That's Mike Draper down in the bullpen. Eddie Murray as a switch hitter. Four times has hit 30 home runs and driven in 100 RBIs in the same season. Mickey Mantle only did it three times. Pickoff play and Coleman is back. Ken Singleton did it once. And so did Ruben Sierra. Pitch to the plate and it's in the dirt. Howard Johnson has done it twice. And Bobby Bonilla has done it once. Eddie Murray. Four times. Murray also needs one grand slam to tie Willie McCovey for second place on the all-time list. Coleman jockeying. He does not go. Murray hits it well to left. Is it enough? Clark back and it's up against the wall. Coleman will score easily and hustling it back into the infield is Gerald Clark and he holds Murray to a single. for Eddie Murray and his second hit of the ball game and at first you thought just for a moment it might carry out of here but you see it comes up just short of the wall Gerald Clark with the carom and immediately the throw into second throw Eddie Murray to a single and Bobby Bonilla with the swing and the foul tip Don Baylor looking on as his club now trails three to nothing. Single runs in the fourth, fifth, and sixth inning. Bonilla homeward in his last at bat. He is one for three. He is taking a lot of time now back into the batter's box and Butch Henry says all right if you go back in then I'll get on the mound. Murray with his lead and to the plate and Bonilla on the changeup can't catch up to him. No balls and two strikes with one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Opening day 1993. We're glad you're aboard to watch it. to Bonilla. One ball and two strikes. Bonilla in 1991 hit 302. 1992 hit 249. That's outside. That's a point decline of 53 points. And only one other player. Had a worse decline than that in 1992, and that was Bill Pakoda, his teammate. 53-point decline. 
from 91 to 92. And one of the reasons why he spent the offseason trying to get in better shape. Strokes it to right field. Bichette gets there. And Murray goes back to first. So Bonilla lines out to right field. Bichette's been rather active in the outfield today. He loses his cap. And he showed off his arm a couple of times. He has. And, you know, we mentioned how Bichette was playing himself into shape uh -huh. defensively in right field during the spring. And it appears that, that he is all the way there defensively. Howard Johnson, a strikeout and two walks. And Hojo takes a strike. throws to Eric Young and that'll do it. Here in the opener, the Mets three, Rockies nothing. Back at Shea Stadium here in the top of the seventh inning. Take a look at those hot dogs making their way around this ballpark. It is opening day and it is a ball game. What better way to do it than to listen to Charlie Jones as he closes out the seventh, eighth, and ninth. All right, we go to the top of the seventh inning and Gerald Clark nails this one. Drifting back to the warning track is Joe Orsolak, and we have one away. So Gerald Clark now 0 for 3 in the ballgame, and that'll bring up Charlie Hayes, who is 0 for 2. 11 in a row, retired by Dwight Gooden. He started this string. When he struck out the big cat, Andres Galarraga, in the top of the third. And Hayes, fly ball, left field. Coleman comes in. And very quickly, we've got two away. And hey, Rockies fans, when in Denver, stay at the Hyatt of downtown and say, he's in the top of the seventh inning, have two away. And that brings up the catcher, Joe Girardi. And he is over two. So Dwight Gooden now working on an opening game two-hit shutout. And retiring the last 12 men in a row. And this should carry out a play. Foul ball. The interest in this game throughout the city, uh, the back pages, full page on the newspapers all this morning, and a sellout crowd here on a Monday afternoon. And as we understand, the game on Wednesday, only about 20,000 are expected. And the same for the Astros when they come in on the weekend. Uh, it may be that we're spoiled. We are. Because of the anticipation of what's going to happen when the Rockies get home. Fly ball right field. And Bobby Bonilla gloves it three up and three down. Quick inning for the Dr. Dwight Gooden. Bottom of the seventh is Joe Orsalak, the center fielder. Butch Henry on the mound in relief of David Nee, who went those five innings and right now stands to lose the game and Gooden stands to win it. Just outside for ball two. Two and oh the guy. David Nee threw a total of 102 pitches. Strike off. And he was in trouble in every inning, wasn't he? He really was. And I don't think he ever got comfortable. He made a couple of good pitches when he had to. Gerald Clark, the left fielder, is there. One away. And with one down, that'll bring up the second baseman, Jeff Kemp. 
Cat is one for three with a base hit. The new Rocky Mountain News has news to share now with four colorful big league sections every day. Still in the easy to read format that you like best. Single in the bottom of the second. He was left, stra left stranded at second. Kent one for three. Fly ball, right field. And Bichette makes the play in foul territory. And we have two away. Is everybody swinging now at the first pitch? Sure seems you get like that impression, don't you? Seems like everybody's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. Yes. But the difference between Butch Henry and David Need is that David Need just did not have his control and was not around the plate enough for the opposition to swing at the first pitch. And with two down, here's the catcher, Todd Hundley. Hundley is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Flight out, struck out, was intentionally walked in the bottom of the fifth. And it's a call strike. Strike two. Hell. Butch Henry is, is a control artist and he likes to work the corners. He does not have that blazing fastball, so he has to rely on his control, his finesse. And that is strike three. So Butch Henry strikes out Todd Hundley on three straight pitches. The eighth inning, the Rockies no runs on two hits. The New York Mets three runs on eight hits. We have not had a miscue appeal. The Rockies have stranded four, including the bases loaded in the top of the third, their best opportunity in the ballgame. And the Mets have left 11 stranded. Here's Freddie Benavides. I think now, Charlie, if you're Don Baylor, you start instructing your players to take a few pitches. Make Doc Gooden work. And Daryl Boston is on deck. And it's popped up. Coleman, the left fielder, comes in and makes the play. Rockies fans, Domino's in the Colorado Rockies are teamed up to offer you a Rockies pizza special for only $9.99. Every time you order a large one-item pizza, Domino's donates a portion of each sale to the Rockies Youth Foundation. So call Domino's now and be sure to ask for your Rockies special, only $9.99. And Daryl Boston receives the ovation here at Chase Stadium. And he fouls it back. Daryl also in both ball clubs were introduced before the ball game. Received a tremendous ovation. Of course, former member of the New York Mets here. Last year, he hit 249 with his ball club. One and one the count. Now one ball, two strikes. Yeah, and Boston had a good spring. 323, a home run, nine RBIs. And Dwight Gooden has retired the last 14 in a row. Did you notice the step of Boston? He thought it may have caught the outside corner. Trying to take a little closer look. Yes. Yeah. Two and two. He strikes him out. That's 15 in a row. And for Gutton, that is his fourth strikeout. Well, facing his former teammate, good tailing, moving fastball from Dwight Gooden. And Daryl Boston, who's been sitting on the bench a little stiff, could not catch up to it. And the hitter is Eric Young. Little check swing, shallow. Right field, and guess what? Bobby Bonilla does it again. He has 
been brilliant today. Bottom of the eighth inning, Mets out in front by a score of three to nothing. Gary Wayne will now be on the mound for the Rockies. So Butch Henry goes two, gives up a couple of hits, strikes out one, did not walk a man, charged with a run. And Dwight Gooden is scheduled to lead off the bottom of the eighth inning. And we're waiting for somebody to come out of the yeah. dugout to find out if it is going to be Gooden or if Jeff Torborg is going to lift Gooden for a pinch hitter. Gooden has thrown a total of 90 pitches. He has retired the last 16 in a row. And during the last five innings, he has thrown five pitches, 13 pitches, 12 pitches, six pitches, and seven pitches. He's coming out. He's coming out. They'd like for him to go ahead and get the complete game. Now, he may have a pitch limit of something around, I suppose, 100. You know, he mentioned in the paper 115. I thought that was very high. It seemed like it would be high, yeah. especially your first outing yeah. after you're still a year and a half, two years, coming off of rotor cuff surgery. He does put in a lot of innings coming into this ball game in nine years. He had logged 1,919 and two thirds. He has a base hit in the ball game and has scored a run. He's one for three. And we have covered the transportation system of New York today. <laughs> Here's the pitch. I mean, our first experience this year was trying to get into the ballpark. Yes, we circled it. <laughs> one ball, one strike to count to Dwight Gooden. Wayne delivers on the changeup, and he fools him. One ball, two strikes. Now, Gary Wayne is going to have some success in this league. A number of reasons. Number one, he's a left-hander. Number two, he's a new left-hander to a new league, and that always helps. Two and two. A lot of players will be jumping from one league to the other. And it's always, in my opinion, the advantage to the pitcher over the hitter. And he strikes him out. So Gary Wayne has his first strikeout in the ballgame. And that is the fifth strikeout for the staff of the Colorado Rockies. Now you can read scouting reports on pitchers. Yeah, they throw a fastball, a slider, a changer, but until you stand in there a couple of times, it's about the only way that you can figure the guy out in, in his pattern. That's why the advantage is to the pitcher. And here is the left fielder, Vince Coleman. Coleman is two for four in the ballgame, a single in the fourth, a single in the sixth, that he scored a run. One of the three that the Mets have. check to see if Vince Coleman had gone around and on the bus Randy Marsh said he did not he halfway said he did and then he flattened both of those arms out and the 2 0 -oh pitch strike one the thing that Vince Coleman has always done during his career is he has always had a big swing and that particular count 2 and 0 oh, this Coleman, a little guy with good speed, still likes to think about the long ball. Well, I think everybody in baseball likes to think about the well, long I ball. I sure did for 11 yes, you years. Did. And, and uh, we saw your highlights uh, in the pregame show. Pounded out. Yes. All of one. But more like mileage you. out of one, Charlie, than many out of more than one. That's true. hard just to hit one. It's hard to just stop at one. When you have a streak going like that. You hear guys hit the ball and they'll be screaming down the line, get out of here. It's, it was hard for me to, to scream, stay in here. And you're not buying it. But he fouls it back, no. I'm choking on that actually is what I'm doing. 
One away, three balls, two strikes to count to Vince Coleman. And he walked him. So Gary Wayne loses Coleman. He's aboard at first on the walk. That is the first walk that Wayne has given up. And that will bring up Tony Fernandez. Your front range Jeep Eagle dealers just receive a huge factory allotment of fun loving 1993 Jeep Wranglers. So come into your dealer right now for the greatest selection of the year on 93 Wranglers and what could be the biggest savings of the year. And a little sort of first. Tony Fernandez on and a walk left stranded in the first since then flying out and bouncing out twice has an RBI in the ball game he's over three one away bottom of the eighth inning Rockies trail three to nothing as history unfolds today at Shea Stadium in New York City and Gary Wayne again a throw to first Now, Coleman is not wandering off that far, is it? He is just not ready to come to the plate? Yeah, it looks like he's trying to size up Gary Wayne. Now, this is the first time that Vince Coleman has seen Gary Wayne. And for many base runners, left-handers are the hardest ones to try to figure out their move. Now, the great base dealers, like Joe Morgan, used to say that they're the easiest because they're facing you. You can see everything they're doing. I always found it difficult. I was not a very good base dealer, although I had pretty good speed. Morgan, on the other hand, pick up things right away. Okay, this is what you watch for, and this is when you go. One ball, one strike to count at the plate. One away, Coleman, the runner at first. Pitch out, he's not going. Two and one. Well, if you're keeping track of pitch outs, Rockies have pitched out four times. And it'll come up empty. to be made about that though Charlie Roger Craig used to pitch out a lot and his theory was was a pretty good one you don't always pitch out to try to guess to see if that runner is going or not a lot of times you pitch out to put it in their in their mind that you're not afraid to pitch out and that may be what the Rockies are doing 3-1 pitches foul back And we've got a full count. Three balls, two strikes to count to Tony Fernandez. One away, Coleman the runner at first. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Mets three, the Rockies nothing. And he walks him. So back-to-back -back walks. Coleman moves down to second. And Fernandez is aboard at first. And the hitter is Eddie Murray. Murray has a pair of singles and an RBI. He also flied out and was on in a walk in the bottom of the third. And it's a call strike. And Jeff Parrott is up in the bullpen for the Rockies. And that's just in case Gary Wayne continues to struggle here in the eighth inning. And he misses outside a ball and a strike. You have the attendance? 53,127 here at Chase Stadium. 
opening day of the 1993 season and opening day in history for the Colorado Rockies. Pretty frustrating right now for Gary Wayne after polishing off Dwight Gooden. Yeah, Gooden's a pitcher, but still, he's not an automatic out. He's a good hitter. He has struggled against Coleman, Fernandez, and now two and one to Eddie Murray. Fly ball left field, Gerald Clark. And that's the second out. The numbers that Dwayne just gave you, that is a new Shea Stadium opening day record. And so the records have already started to fall. We talk about this coming Friday at Mile High Stadium, more than 80,000 expected. And the homestand of seven games, a little break here and good weather there, could reach half a million. And here's Bobby Bonilla. Start tearing up the record book. Oh, yes. Rewrite it. Swing and a miss for strike one. Bonilla with a solo home run in the bottom of the fifth and a couple of stellar defensive plays. Yeah, he's played a, an outstanding right field. And he also parked one down the right field line as well. He's had a good day. The Mets with runners at first and second. And it's a foul ball. 0 oh and 2 the count to Bobby Bonilla. Charlie, I think also the thing to make a point is day off tomorrow, the Rockies will work out. And then Wednesday afternoon, might be a good game for the Rockies. A little bit more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry so much about all the festivities and, and all the importance of this one game. This will carry into the stand. And then, of course, traveling back to Denver on Wednesday night. A workout at Mile High Stadium that's open to the public on Thursday afternoon. And then the home opener at 3 o'clock Friday afternoon. Of course, we will televise. That will be our next television game. 3 p.m. Friday afternoon. Rockies time. Televised four games in a row. Yes. And it is high. One ball, two strikes to count to Bobby Bonilla. Two away in the bottom of the eighth. Both runners are going. And we have a double steal that is successful. Now Joe Girardi played umpire instead of play catcher. He thought it was strike three, and on strike three, obviously you don't have to throw the ball. That's it. Final out. Innings over. Watch Joe. Oh, yeah. Benilla to Gerald Clark deep in left field. Nothing. Dwight Gooden has retired the last 16 Rocky batters that he has faced. Defensive change, Joe Arcelak, the center fielder moves over to right. Bobby Bonilla comes out of the ball game, And Dave Gallagher is now the center fielder. And speaking of center fielder, here is Alex Cole to lead it off. Marlon still in front of the Dodgers by a score of 6-3. to three. And a 1-0 count to Alex Cole. Alex is 0 for 2. He pops this one up, shallow left field. Coleman comes in and makes the call and takes it. We have one away. That's 17 in a row for Dwight Gooden. And the good doctor is in midseason form. Yes, indeed he is. See the Reds beat the Expos. At home in their opening. By a score of 2 to 1. Braves shutting out the Cubs 1 to nothing. And what a great pitching staff they have. It just goes on and on, doesn't it? Here's Dante Bichette. 0 for 3, hit by a pitch. The more than 6,000 proud 
Coloradan who worked at Coors Brewing Company, produced some of the best beer that you'll find anywhere. When you want a quality beer, choose Coors. Here's to you, Colorado. And Bichette with a base hit. So Dante Bichette is aboard with one out. We're in the top of the ninth inning. And the Rockies are down three to nothing. So after retiring 17 in a row, Gooden gives up the base hit to Dante Bichette. And that is only the third hit that Dwight Gooden has given up in the ballgame. And now you need to get another base runner aboard which would bring the tying run to home plate and then you're one swing away from tying the game. And here's Andres Galarraga. As Dwayne mentioned earlier he has the first hit in Rocky history. And this is off the handle and it's going to drop in. No backspin. And Bichette goes to third. Here is the throw to second and they get him. So Galarraga trying to stretch it is thrown out at second. He'll get the single. And we have two away. Here's the throw. Now Orsalak picks it up barehanded. Then makes a strong throw. Daniel Galarraga, who is going into second base. Remember, the Rockies needed base runners. It didn't matter what base they were on. They just needed base runners. So that is a bad play by Andres Galarraga. And Gerald Clark. Fly ball. Right side. Arsalak takes it. And that's the game. The New York Mets. Behind the four-hit pitching. Who goes all the way and has his first win. They take the opener over the Colorado Rockies by a score of three to nothing.